Hi, I'm Dr. Scott Hahn here at the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology. I want to just stop for a moment and reflect with you on the significance of Holy Thursday. Looking back on my days as a Protestant, we called it Monday Thursday. We didn't know why, but there was a mandatum, a mandate of sorts that came from the Lord. We knew it had to do with the Lord's Supper, but we didn't see it quite the same way as I do now as a Catholic. For us, it was a kind of farewell meal. Okay, in the context of the sacred Passover of the ancient Jews, but it wasn't really anything more than the institution of the Eucharist as sacrament, but really as an even more sacred meal. But in fact, Holy Thursday is for all Christians, whether they know it or not, and especially for us as Catholics who do know it. It is the font of the Paschal mystery. It is the origin of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If, in fact, it is just a meal that Jesus is celebrating on Holy Thursday, then it's just a Roman execution that happened on Good Friday. But if, in fact, on Holy Thursday, he is not just celebrating the Passover one last time, but fulfilling it as the true Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world, then it is more than a meal because the Passover in the Old Covenant was more than a meal. The Passover was, of course, a sacrifice first and foremost. You could just ask any lamb. If he could talk, he would tell you it's more than a meal. But the meal aspect was really the sacrificial communion upon the sacrificial victim. And if that was true in the old, it isn't less true in the new. No, what Jesus was doing on Holy Thursday, celebrating the Passover, fulfilling it as the Lamb of God, was transforming a sacrifice of irrational animals who had their throats slashed and their bodies roasted into something truly sacred and a profound mystery at that. For what he instituted in the Holy Eucharist was the Passover of the New Covenant, with him as not only the Lamb, but the High Priest and the Altar. This alone makes sense out of the words of consecration, which we've heard all of our lives. When he takes that bread, the unleavened bread of the Passover, and speaks those solemn words, take this and eat of it. This is my body, which is given for you. And then later at the end of the supper, when he takes the chalice and he speaks those sacred words of consecration, this is more than rhetoric. It's more than just a ritual embellishment added to the old Passover. This is precisely how he transforms the Passover of the old into the Passover of the new. This is where his sacrifice begins. This is where his own self-offering originates. It's more than rhetoric. It's more than ritual. There is a reality that is truly mysterious, but real and true. And this alone is what illuminates what happened to him on the next day at Calvary on Good Friday, where it looked as though he was nothing more than the hapless victim of Roman injustice and violence in this gruesome execution that occurs in the crucifixion. No, if what he said was more than words, then what he did on Holy Thursday was to commence the offering up of his own body and the outpouring of his own blood. And then on Good Friday, his execution is transformed into a sacrifice, one so holy that it retired all of the animals that had been offered on the altar there in the Jerusalem temple. This was proof that he was not losing his life on Friday because he had freely laid it down out of love for us on Holy Thursday, that he wasn't the victim of Roman violence at Calvary. He was the victim of divine love and mercy in the upper room on Holy Thursday. And so if Holy Thursday, if the Eucharist that he institutes is just a meal, then Calvary is just a Roman execution. But if in fact the Eucharist that he institutes on Holy Thursday is the sacrifice of the Passover, the new covenant, it can't be just a meal or it wouldn't even rise to the level of a Passover. It's the new Passover. It's precisely where he lays down his life out of love for us. And then the proof of that is the following day, on Good Friday, at Calvary, when that body is given up, where the blood is poured out. And so, in fact, the Eucharist is what transformed that execution into the supreme and holy sacrifice, the holiest of all. 
And likewise, Easter Sunday is what transforms that sacrifice into the blessed sacrament that we now celebrate. Because his body is no longer in the upper room. It's no longer hanging on the cross. It's no longer buried in the tomb. The body of Christ is raised from the dead. And the Eucharistic body of Christ is the resurrected body of Christ. This is the Triduum. This is the Paschal Mystery. It's Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. It is the memorial of his death and resurrection. The memorial is what is instituted on Holy Thursday. The crucifixion, of course, his passion and death is Good Friday, but his resurrection is what we all prepare to celebrate on Easter Sunday. This is one and the same mystery, three aspects of his own sacrifice. But what a glorious discovery it was for me and all of the other convert friends of mine. But I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, all of us are converts. All of us are converted through these sacred mysteries in the Triduum. And there is no better time than now in this great crisis where we are literally deprived of being physically present there at the Holy Thursday Mass, at the Good Friday celebration, at the Easter Sunday. And for me, the most painful part of it is to miss out on the Easter Vigil on Saturday evening. But, you know, in a sense, absence makes the heart grow fonder. And so for us, we are presented with a challenge, but also a divine opportunity for our faith to rise to the level of rediscovering, reappropriating, and renewing our thankfulness. Because even at a distance, Christ is our high priest in heaven. And even at a distance, our parish priest is the human figure that Christ is using on earth to renew this covenant. We are called together to enter into a mystery that goes beyond our wildest dreams, our highest hopes. And so on Holy Thursday, let's take God at his word, the word inspired in sacred scripture, to rediscover how the new fulfills the old in a way that is just like new wine bursting old wineskins. And at the same time, to connect not only the Old and New Testaments, but to connect sacred scripture with the Holy Eucharist. For it wasn't just the Holy Eucharist that he instituted as a sacrament on Holy Thursday in the upper room. It's also holy orders. It was when Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Because what he had just done in offering the Eucharist was the work of our high priest. But what he did by saying to them, do this in remembrance of me, in effect, is the fulfillment of the priesthood of the old by the high priest of the new, passing along to the twelve apostles this power to participate in his own sacrifice. This is the Eucharist. Doing this in remembrance is the sacrament of holy orders. And so, in effect, that word remembrance, anamnesis, is more than just recalling a past event. Anamnesis is the Greek term that translates the Hebrew zikaron, which was the memorial offering. The sacrifice of Christ is precisely what these men were empowered by the Holy Spirit to do in the sacrifice of the Mass. And so we look to see the Holy Eucharist and Holy Orders. And I got to tell you, brothers and sisters, with two sons of mine in the seminary preparing to receive the sacrament of Holy Orders, this means more to me now than ever before. But frankly, just how meaningful the Holy Eucharist and Holy Orders are both for all of us, has got to take on new meaning. Because even though we are somewhat distant from our priests on earth, watching, as it were, you know, on TV or the internet, we are even more distant from our high priest who is in heaven. And yet he is with us always to the close of the age. The real presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, in our tabernacles, and what we look forward to, as we receive him once again in Holy Communion on our tongues. This is that for which we were made. This is that by which we were redeemed. And so this constitutes our hope. And so as we draw into the sacred mysteries of Holy Thursday, let's ask our Father in the name of Jesus to send the power of the Holy Spirit to increase our faith, hope, and love. Please be assured of our prayers here at the center. 
but please remember us in yours. God bless you.